I'll try to come out and give you like five minutes or something like that. Well, have we gone live? I didn't get a word from anybody, but it looks like we have. So, it's live from Studio A of Community Television in Santa Cruz, California. It's, look, Mom, I'm on TV. And tonight, we're featuring Slippery Envelope. I kind of like that name when I heard it. I don't know why I'm trying to picture a Slippery Envelope. And... Uh, it probably, if it exists, probably was an envelope that had some money for me that just slipped out of my hands. It was slippery. Yeah. And I saw an ad for a, an exotic pet shop that had opened up. I read it, exotic pet shop. I couldn't resist. I had to go see it. So when I entered the store, there was a sign on a terrarium. Just arrived, talking centipede. And I was laughing. And looking at it, and this clerk walked up, and I looked at him, I said, what's the joke? Centipedes don't talk. And very seriously, he said the clerk, just said, it really does talk. Your money back if it's not true. Just give it a day or two to become acclimated. So I thought, no, well, money back. So I purchased this, purchased it, carried the terrarium home, found a nice place on the mantle, put it up. And then that evening, I... Looked up, I'm going to go out and get a beer. So I walked up to the tank. And they said, hey, all right, centipede. I'm going to walk down to the bar and wonder, do you want to go for a few beers? Well, as I expected, the centipede said nothing. And I chuckled and scoffed and walked off and went down and got a beer or two. And next night, I had the same thing. You know, I'd eaten and feeling like a beer, and so I walked up to the tank again, tapped and said, hey, centipede, I'm just going to go down for a beer again. Do you want to go for a few beers? Yeah, still absolutely no response from the centipede. So I went on my way, planning to return it on the weekend when I had time. Well, next evening, Friday evening, it was still there, and I thought, well, I'll give it one more try because I it's kind of having fun talking to the centipede. So I tapped on the thing. I said, hey, uh, I'm just going down to the bar. You want to go down for a few beers? And the centipede looked up at me. And I says, I heard you the first two times, but you left too quickly. You just got to wait a while. I'm still putting on my shoes. And he drank like a fool, too. <laughs> the doctor who was retiring, and uh, he was seeing one of his favorite patients. He's a feisty 80-year-old woman. And he explained that he was retiring and at the next visit she would be seeing a new doctor. And for your next checkup, he wants you to bring in a list of all the medicines and supplements you were taking. So a few weeks went by, whatever, and it was her visit. She dutifully came in to the doctor and handed him the list of all the drugs and things that she was taking. The doctor looked at it. And look, eyes got wide. He stared at the woman. He said, saw a, a prescription there for birth control. He says, Mrs. Smith, do you realize these are birth control pills? She said, oh, yes, they help me sleep at night. The doctor said, Mrs. Smith, I assure you, taking these pills at bedtime could not possibly help you sleep. She reached out and patted the young doctor's knee and said, Yes, dear, but I don't take them at bedtime. But every morning, I grind one up and mix it in the glass of orange juice that my 16-year-old granddaughter drinks. Believe me, dear, it helps me sleep at night. <laughs> yeah, good stuff. A man, he's riding on a crowded commuter, filled bus, reading a paper, when a young mother with a baby sat next to him. And the baby was fussing, so she decided to breastfeed the little baby and thinking that would calm him down. Well, the baby just wasn't having any of that. He was still fussing. He's, you know, not wanting to, to, to take part in having a little feed. And so she whispers to him, come on, sweetie, eat it all up, or I'll have to give it to this nice man next to us. 
minute or so goes by, Babu is still not feeding. So she again whispers, Come on, honey, take it. I'll have to give it to this nice man here. Well, the cycle repeated a couple more times when the anxious man mumbled, Come on, kid, make up your mind. I was supposed to get off at the last stop. Oh, I'll get some static for that one. Students in an advanced biology class were taking their midterm exam. The last question was, name seven advantages of mother's milk. The question was worth 70 points, but no points if you had less than seven advantages cited. Well, one student was hard put to think of seven advantages. He's scratching his head. Finally, slowly wrote down, mm, one, uh, it is the perfect formula for the child. Uh, two, it provides immunity against several diseases. He's feeling better, he's getting it. Three, it's always the right temperature. Four, it's inexpensive. And five, it bonds the child to the mother and vice versa. And six, it's, it's always available as needed. Boy, he felt really good now, one more. And then he's stuck, he's thinking. Just as the bell's gonna ring, he quickly comes up with something. Seven, it comes in two attractive containers and it's high enough off the ground where the cat can't get it. <laughs> it was this hardy old cattleman. He was chatting with his new neighbor who was uh, at a welcoming bank, milk, at a welcoming barbecue that some of the neighbors were throwing uh, for the new uh, neighbor that they had. And the young woman said, you know, I was talking to him, said that moving from the city to the country would add years to her life. The gentleman looked at her. He thought, he told her that if she wanted to live a long life, the secret was to sprinkle some gunpowder on her oatmeal each morning. Well, this man, you know, was obviously in advanced years and seemed healthy and hearty, and she thought maybe that works. So she did this religiously every morning, a little gunpowder on the oatmeal. She lived to be 103. She left behind 14 children. She left behind 30 grandchildren. She left behind 21 great-grandchildren, five great-great-grandchildren, and left a 40-foot hole where the crematorium used to be. Mm. I've got to think about these. I recently told a new acquaintance that she drew her eyebrows too high. She looked surprised. I once went to a therapist. His first question to me was, what are you good at? I quickly replied, I'm so good at sleeping, I can do it with my eyes closed. Then he says, what rhymes with orange? I said, no, it doesn't. So I asked him, what's well, orange and sounds like a parrot? He looked puzzled. I had to tell him, a carrot. Didn't see that therapist anymore. Hey, let's see. Hey, Halloween's approaching. Ever wonder why skeletons don't ever go trick-or-treating? Eh, because they have no body to go with. And what do you call an elephant that doesn't matter? An irrelevant. Thinking about tools, you know, the shovel out there was a groundbreaking invention. Well, oh, I was going to tell you a great joke about construction, but I'm still working on it. I bought a small table last week. Now the saleswoman from the furniture store keeps calling me. She just doesn't accept that all I wanted was one night stand. If two wrongs don't make a right, try three. People say nothing is impossible. Not true. 
I do nothing every day. And I want you to appreciate that doing nothing is difficult. You never know when you're done. Now, I offer you four, three, four, three, three morsels of knowledge. The answer you're looking for is inside you, but it's probably wrong. Your life can't fall apart if you never had it together. And a balanced diet means a cupcake in each hand. Live by those, be happy, and whatever. Okay, time to kick off your shoes, grab your beverage of choice, and listen to Slippery Envelope. And here they come.
playing the sounds you didn't think you wanted to hear. For you. Thanks for <laughs> celebrating our mom being on television. A merry majestic couch week to all of you. Yes, yes. We would like to thank Richard and all of Santa Cruz for creating this mess with us. Yes. We would now like to bring you to our festive chance meeting with everything.
Is so mesmerized back there and practically hypnotized that I forgot what was going on. Uh, I want you to come up here and uh, we'll chat a little bit. Uh, first, um, um, uh, who's your wardrobe consultant? Do you want to give them credit? You know, I mean, you've got a hell of a. <laughs> I got this covered. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you got you know you got an interesting act, and uh, I was watching it and looking good. Now, you know, I think it was effective. I hope you guys, when you see it, uh, sit down and, and review it. That you're happy with what we got here. Um, yeah, yeah, and it's as I told you before the show, and I have people that watch the show know that. I bring on talent no matter what the genre is, no matter what, the, what they do, no matter how 
skilled or, or beginning they are. My whole thing is we're here and we want to give talent a chance to, you know, perform. The amazing thing is that, and I don't know if Santa Cruz is truly unusual, but there is an awful lot of talent which uh, my limited musical knowledge says, boy, these people are great. I mean, I, I've often said a few times when we had the studio on Pacific Avenue, and for people who aren't around Santa Cruz, Pacific is the main uh, thoroughfare downtown. And on a nice day on Pacific Avenue, you'll pass three, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten uh, buskers playing. And because our studio was on Pacific Avenue, once in a while, talent would call or something would happen, and they say, it's the last minute, we can't get in there. And so an hour before the show, I would walk down Pacific Avenue, stop at the buskers. You know, I saw somebody that sounded like, you know, it might be fun to fit in. And uh, I would, the people would come in, they would play, and, you know, as opposed to playing on the street, they were in, and then they had uh, a sound system set up. They had somebody who was, for, you know, pretty well qualified at audio, and pretty nice video that's a little above what uh, just having their friend with their cell phone stand outside and or beside them and, and film. So it was a good it was a good relationship, and and I used to look at it and I think, well, these people are you know, it's amazingly good. And I don't watch a lot of uh, talent shows on television. Hardly, I must say, almost never watch uh, I'm a Star or whatever they have on. Um, but the few times when I've been at somebody's house and they like it and they watch it, and I'll be watching for a while and I'll look, you know, I'll say, wait a second, walk down Pacific Avenue and you're going to run into people that are at least twice as, you know, uh, proficient at their craft than these people that are on this show. So we're very fortunate here to have this talent. You guys are native Santa Cruz or are you uh, interlopers? Born in Santa Cruz, been back for a while. Yeah. I've been in town around 10 years. Good, good. Um, how would you characterize your sound, seriously? It's, it's, it's a, you know, I, I, I'm not sure of all the new terms for, for some of the new music that's coming out or, or whatever. Future music, you know, playing the sounds you didn't think you wanted to hear. Yeah. If, uh, so, if anyone's got a genre for us, feel free. We're experimental composite music. All right, there we go. A, a musician's looking for a genre, okay? Create a genre for them. Get on there. You know, the, the credits will show their uh, email at the, and uh, their band camp thing. Get on their email or their Facebook. Is it your Facebook I put up there? Your email. Yeah, I got, we got, you got your email up there. That's what we use. So, you know, send them, send them a note saying, hey, your genre is, you know, bolicious or something. I don't know. I like that. Yeah. Um, before you got into what you're doing right now. Yeah. yeah. I assume you were playing music, you were doing something, you, you know, you took lessons and learned how to play guitar, drums. What, what were your beginning, uh, you know, songs like, or the things that you started out playing and, and got enthused about? Drums, you know, it took me a while to get into those, but that's been making the most sense since I've been doing that. And, Otherwise, it's just beats me where influences come from, but, you know, you got circumstance and influence and trying to just sort of smash them out in the middle. Good, good. And any, any uh, drummer that comes to mind that you used to see uh, and say, gee, I don't really like him? Sort of too many to think. Like, my dad's got a good drum style. I haven't gotten to hear my namesake's drum style, but also sort of been carrying that on, I think. Okay. Oh, that's yeah. interesting. So your, your dad's a musician? In his spare time, more or just for his own yeah. kicks, yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, music is one of those things that, 
is for kicks and spirits of time. That's tough to get paying gigs at, at it. And yet, there are people out there doing it. So, what about you? Excuse me. <laughs> that was a. Uh, I was. I was in a punk band in high school. I was in a reggae band in high school. I moved to Santa Cruz. I uh, started playing with things and making sounds with them. And uh, I discovered that it's uh, it's more fun not to just stick to one thing and you know just uh, try and pull sounds from as many different galaxies as I can and uh, manifest them in this current timeline. <laughs> My apologies to the audience. A skilled professional such as myself should have realized that the connection on the mic had slipped down. And so we were talking, but you didn't hear some of the best comments that we've made. Sorry about that. Um, is there anything, a lot of times I, I ask people, it may not quite be uh, significant in, in for you, but, but people who compose music, um, where, where, the, where the thought came from? Where did the idea come from? Is, is, that, uh, is that something that you can think about and say why you were you know, playing, what you were playing to, uh, tonight, why that came about? Um, we try and just uh, call on the spirit of the moment to guide us to what sounds need to be made. Um, I definitely... Uh, listen to a bunch of different kinds of music. My parents were musicians as well. Um, and I, I bring little bits of all that in. Uh, but mostly, it's just listening to the moment, essentially. Anything to add to that? Makes, Makes sense, sense to me, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it seems like a good idea. It seems like one of those things where if you don't Sometimes if you don't fill your mind up too much with what is being told to you or surrounding you or whatever, um, but leave room for new thoughts to come in, that they will come in and who knows where they come from. Um, it just, it, it's interesting. But I, I'm more comfortable with more traditional music which has um, lyrics that you know, have meaning and, and uh, music that has a beat and a rhythm. Uh, but um, I'm certainly open to other things and realize there are other things. One of the things that you find along that line, which I have found, was growing up in the society in which I grew up, and most of us did, um, our tastes are shaped by the things that we've heard and, and listened to, and in terms of music, the music that we've listened to, uh, I think that we get conditioned to that. But if you take it, chance, adventure out, go to the library, you don't even have to buy things, buy some music from other lands and cultures and find new sounds, new tempos, new things, um, which is very interesting to me. It's not electronic necessarily music, it's, it, but it creates, as I said, a different tempo, different feelings, and for me, it was always fun to go get some music from uh, the Far East or music from uh, Africa or whatnot, and uh, just be amazed, you know. And, and, and most of the time, the things that you hear, even if they're different for you, when you stop and listen to them, they will seep into you and you will start to appreciate that. Um, so I don't know. Any thoughts along those lines? I think you're absolutely right. I have, you know, I hear things in my music that 
were things I listened to as a little kid and things that I listen to regularly now, things I've never heard before sometimes. Um, we've got uh, somewhere around 35 albums or so up on the internet right now, and uh, they're all a little different. We try to keep them coming out. Yeah. All right. Well, it looks like the closing credits have crept up upon us, and I'd like to thank everybody for coming in and helping this show. We are all volunteers. People give up their time to do this, and talent comes in and doesn't get paid anything, and they hope to heck that what we do ends up being something that they can be proud of. Um, if you're out of the Santa Cruz area,